Welcome to Electro Online. In this example, we're trying to find the force on Q2 due to the presence of Q1 and Q3. The best thing to do always is to draw the vectors first. So the force on Q2 due to the presence of Q1 will be down in this direction. It's a force of repulsion. So this is F between 1 and 2. And then the force between Q3 and Q2. Again, it's the force of repulsion. Q3 will push against Q2 in this direction. So this will be F between 2 and 3. And now we realize since the distance between these two is the same as the distance between those two, the magnitude of these forces should be the same. To find the total force, we simply have to add vectorially these two forces together. So this will be the final force or the total force, F total, which is equal to the sum, and I think this pen is running out of ink, let me find my other purple pen. There we go. So this would be, that would be F12 plus F23. And that will be the total force on Q2 due to the presence of the other two. It's a vectorial sum. Now in this case, notice that we don't have to find the components because this only has an an X component and this force only has a Y component so we can go ahead and put it in its final form as soon as we find the magnitude of these two forces. Since the distances are the same the magnitudes are going to be the same which means the magnitude F between 1 and 2 so between 1 and 2 will be the same as the force the magnitude of force between 2 and 3 which is equal to K times the product of their two charges, which will be Q times Q, divided by the distance between them squared. So this will be KQ squared divided by D squared. And it'll be the same, even though they're pointing in different directions. As far as the magnitude is concerned, we don't care about that and we don't care about the signs. Now we're ready to write down the final result. So we can say here that the total force acting on Q2 is equal to the vector sum between 1 and 2 plus the, the force between 2 and 3. So in this case, let's see here. Uh, F12, well, that's in the y direction. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these around. I'm going to say 2, 3 plus 1, 3. The reason why I did that is because 2, 3 is pointing in the x direction. 1, 2, oh, got to have the right subscripts down, so the force between 2 and 3 is in the x direction, the force between 1 and 2 is in the y direction, so this can now be written as the magnitude kq squared divided by d squared, and that's going to be negative because it's pointing in the negative x direction, and then minus kq squared divided by d squared in the y direction. What if I want to find the magnitude of the final force? Well, the magnitude, F total, is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the magnitude. So that would be F23 squared plus F, uh, that would be, uh, let's see, 1, 2 squared. Like this. And so this can be written as the square root of KQ squared over D squared, quantity squared, plus k q squared over d squared quantity squared so this would be equal to the square root of two of those two times k q squared divided by d squared squared and of course the square root of something squared you can simply take it outside the square root sign so this becomes equal to the square root of two times k q squared divided by d squared and that would be the magnitude of the final force, the total force, or we can also, of course, write it like this with a vector sign and absolute value signs like that. So that gives us the magnitude of the force. If we want to know the angle, let's say we want to find this angle right here, and let's call that angle phi, realizing, of course, that there's perfect symmetry here, and you know that this is going to be 45 degrees, but if you didn't realize that, or the d's are not the same, the distances are not the same, we can then say that the angle phi can be written as the inverse tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side to the angle. It should be a j there. 
So the opposite side to the angle here, that would be F12, the adjacent side would be F23, so phi is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite side to the angle, that would be F12, the magnitude, divided by F23. And we realize, of course, that the magnitudes are the same for those two, which means that this would be equal to the inverse tangent of 1, which is 45 degrees. Of course, in most cases, that won't be as easy, but at least you see the technique now, how we find the total force in a vector format, and then how to find the magnitude by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components, and then to find the angle at which the final result, the total force, points at relative to the x-axis in this case. That's how it's done.